Hello there, and welcome to this series on elementary statistics. This course series can be used for any of the normal courses on biostatistics, social statistics, business statistics, or just regular statistics. In this video, we're going to be primarily focusing on the primary question, namely, what is statistics? We'll be answering this question in a grave bit of detail. We'll discuss a couple terms that are extremely important to know, namely samples, populations, statistics, and parameters. And we'll also discuss a couple other notations and ideas associated with the studies of statistics. So, as a basic example, let us start off with the following question, which some people may be able to relate to. So the question is, what do people think of you? That is people's opinions, say. So a basic principle that should be aware in this context is the following. And this context is that everyone can have a opinion even if they don't know you. So with this being said, we need to figure out, okay, let's get people's opinions. And where are we going to get these people from? So the ma first main set that you should understand is what we call the population. So the population in this case is the collection of all possible respondents. In this case, everyone with an opinion. But you cannot ask everyone about you and their opinion about you. So from here, what we do is we collect a sample. So a sample is a collection of respondents for which a response is acquired. So typically, uh, what can some samples be? Well, you can ask your friends, you can ask your family, you can ask your coworkers. Since all these people are from the population, you can pretty much ask these three sets or pretty much uh, a lot of the other sets for which you can possibly think of. So let's introduce some mathematical notation that we're going to be using uh, throughout this series. So we're going to refer to P as the population. So P is the set of all possible people that can respond. And S is also going to be representing the sample. So let's assume, you know, let's consider the following studies, say, your favorite numbers. So if we consider your favorite numbers, then the set of all possible numbers that are your favorite may be, you know, 1, 7, 5, and 12. Now let's assume we have a sample from this population, say, 7 and 5. So in general, if we take some numbers from this population, say this, or you could just choose one, or you can choose, say, five and 12, or you can maybe even choose all four of them, it doesn't really matter, they're all coming from the population, then those are all examples of samples. So what we usually write is the following statement or result, namely S is a subset of P. So this is the mathematical way of writing S is a subset of P. And what that means in mathematical language is the following, that for all elements x inside of s, x must also be inside of p. So if you were to draw a Venn diagram, so let's assume that this region corresponds to p, then any sample, so you can call that S1, you can call this S2, you can call this set here 
S3. Of course, they can share some overlap. You can have this little baby set over here. You can call that S4 and so on. So all of these sets are subsets of the bigger set. And in particular, any sample must be a subset of the population, else it's not a valid uh, sample at all. So let's do an example to sort of bring these things together. So an example, uh, let's consider the opinion of students on a statistics class. So let's assume this is what we want to conduct an experimental study on. So what is my population possibly going to be? So P should contain all of the people who have an opinion on a statistics class. So for example, uh, all people who have taken a statistics class in the past, you know, that have completed a statistics course as a whole. So what would be a possible uh, sample from that? So let S be, you know, people who uh, took a statistics class, say, last semester. This would be a subset of P because, of course, last semester is a subset of the past. Now, this sample, is it a good sample or is it a bad sample? We don't know. Now, based on our recollection of, say, memory storage in the human brain, we know that we can ask the most recent people who have taken a statistics class, and it's probably a lot more relevant or more per, you know, uh, relatable, say, uh, you know, based on culture, based on societal practices or so, so forth. Um, you know, asking somebody who took a statistics class, say, 50 years ago, probably would have a different viewpoint on what statistics probably even should be, uh, and so on. So definitely, you know, your choice of samples uh, should have a little bit more of a discussion or a choice practice behind it. But, you know, in general, any sample in this context would do. Uh, how to make that sample better, we can discuss at a later time. So a question. Uh, that one should answer is the following. So how to measure opinion. So this is our study that we're interested in. We're interested in, you know, understanding the opinion of students on a statistics class. So we've identified our population. We'd have identified a potential you know, sample that maybe we can uh, pull from. Now, we might not be able to get all the students who took a statistics class last semester, but we might be able to get a little handful, or maybe we know some friends in our dormitories or so forth. So how to measure opinion? You know, once we get these people, exactly how are we going to measure them? So what we can do is we can do a scale, say, from 0 to 10. And we need to interpret this numerical measurement. So zero is completely hate, and 10 may, you know, we can call this completely love. And everything in the middle, let's assume it's an increasing scale. So five is like, eh, it was okay. You know, didn't hate it, didn't love it, even it's just sort of in the middle. So let's consider the population in this case P, and let us also consider the sample, in this case S. So ideally you want to collect all of the possible samples. So collect all responses. So if we can collect all the responses from the population, and once we cal cal uh, collect all the responses, then we're going to calculate their average. Once we calculate their average, we're going to call this uh, calculation mu. And then, similarly, you could do the same from the sample. Now, why would we do a sample if we had the population? Well, the short answer is you can't. But in practice, this is not possible in practice. Because maybe it's a lot of you know students, maybe 5 million. You can't ask 5 million people. Maybe you can only ask, you know say, 5,000 or something. So in pra practice, this is not possible for large populations. So what we do is we collect a sample. So we collect a sample, collect the sample responses, uh, which is typically uh, possible. 
actually always possible. Under extreme circumstances, can you not do a uh, study at all? So from here, what we're going to do is we're going to calculate its average. And we're going to call this average, we're going to call it x bar. All right, so in general, mu is what we want. X bar is what we can get. So let's outline this. So what we really want is mu, but can only obtain x bar. So x bar and mu are calculations. Mu comes from the population P. X bar comes from the sample S. Anything that comes from a population P is what we refer to as a parameter. Starts with P, population P. And anything that comes or describes a sample is what we call a statistic, which is the name of this course. So statistics describe samples, parameters describe populations. We cannot usually obtain populations, so we grab samples, and we use those samples to talk about populations, and statistics talk about parameters and so on. All right, so a couple notes here. So first off, x bar is an estimate for mu. So again, this is Greek letter mu, mu. And in general, statistics are estimates for parameters. And from statistics, we can make and this is pretty much what the course talks about. So we can make statistical inferences, statistical inferences about the population. Either about the population or naturally the population parameters because the parameters describe about the population. Now, some things to keep in mind, though, about these statistical inferences. They could be wrong. They also could be right. And they could, that's not could, C-O-U-L-D. So could, and this is usually most likely, contain error. So statistics is typically the study about, you know, collecting uh, data, you know, looking into, you know, what does it say about the population and studying the error and the likelihood that it could be right or wrong. So, for example, uh, let's conclude all these things in one nice example. So let's talk about systolic blood pressure, which some people just uh, abbreviate as SBP. So what we're going to do is we're going to assume that mu SBP, so mu represents a population parameter. So when I say mu SBP is equal to 120 uh, mmHg or millimeters of mercury, I'm assuming that the average of all of the blood pressures in the entire population, whether it be country or state or county or whatnot, is 120 mmHg. So what we're going to do is we're going to collect a sample, say from your local neighborhood, and then we're going to find an estimate for mu SBP. So the most you know reasonable estimate for mu SBP, which we'll also study, in this case is going to be X bar SBP. So once we do that, we're going to collect a sample, and let us assume we have a sample and from the sample, we find that the sample mean of the systolic blood pressure is equal to 132 mmHg. 
So we have this you know, statistic and we're estimating this parameter. So based on this comparison, what can we possibly say about the sample, whether it be your neighborhood or school? So this info provides possibly, you know, it's possible this sample, this location is overweight, generally obese. Maybe. That's a question mark. It's not a true fact. And from this, maybe we can, you know, increase some advertisements for some fitness products or some dietary products or maybe make some initiatives and legislation or some political, you know, changes or whatnot. Um, but this is just a basic overview of statistics, namely in terms of samples, populations, statistics, parameters, and how you will use these in this upcoming series to make inferences about these population parameters. Hope you enjoy.